Time on deck, 1708 Central Standard Time. That's 508 Central Standard Time. So what's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zipali here. You flooded me with questions about earning seven-figure income in three years. So I, listen, I, I want you guys to know I don't take full credit for this stuff. I want to introduce you to my business partner, Machina Zipali. So hi, baby. Hello. How is everybody? So you can obviously tell. The difference in personality. Yeah. Can you? <laughs> it's very obvious. Very obvious. But uh, I just want to say, baby, we've been grinding out for the last three years. And I just want to toast to you. Great cheers. job. Cheers. Cheers to you on that. Uh, cheers to you on that. Wine for her. Scotch for me. I love fine. you, baby. Oh, you too. So hello, everybody. If uh, you're joining us right now, great to be with you guys. You guys have been flooding us with questions. Um, listen, man, I, I, I just want to... Uh, there's a bunch of text messages here. Listen, uh, uh, let me let me show you a little some some. So if you got if you guys can see that, right? You guys send me about there's a, there's over 120 text messages, uh, 18 Snapchat messages that I've still yet to get back to. So I uh, just want to say hello, and we're gonna respond to you as best we can throughout this conversation. If you haven't done so, uh, please share this video because sharing is caring. Yes, caring. <laughs> Sharing is caring, and uh, we just want to encourage everybody out there uh, that's working and grinding out in the entrepreneur world, the veteran world. Uh, we just want to share some value with you here on a Friday afternoon, TGI Friday. Thank God I'm free. Well, TGI Friday. Thank God I'm free to hustle every day because one of the greatest things you have in your corner is the ability to make money. So, babe, can you tell everybody a little bit about our background, let's start off with your background. And yeah, so uh, let me get to some of these comments here that people are are, are, are dropping. But uh, can you share a little bit of background about where you come from and how we got together? Oh, goodness, you're smooth. Um, so I'm from California. Um, I went Cali to, girl. I went to school at the University of Pittsburgh, go Pitt. I uh, graduated with a degree in marketing and finance, and I started with a really incredible company um, out of college called Striker Medical. And after about 10 years, I retired and came into the financial world and built a, an agency alongside my husband. So we were, we were dating for how long? A uh, year and a half. A year, year and a half, half. yep. Yeah, yep. And so, and just to give you guys some dynamics, we're, we're both single parents. And, um, and uh, I, I came to this relationship with three children. And she came to this relationship with one child, mm -hmm. and together we're a blended family. Mm -hmm. um, have not uh, co-created yet. No, 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 no co-creation here. But that, that's uh, definitely part of the conversation, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 so uh, there's a lot of uh, veterans coming on. It looks like Joe Bellina, Semper Fi, Devil Dog from Las Vegas. Hey, listen, I'm wearing red, man. Remember, everybody deployed. It's Red Friday. Every Friday, I wear red to honor our Marines and soldiers and service members across the United States, as well as um, uh, the world that are deployed. So uh, this is red for Red Friday. Remember everyone deployed, fighting for our freedom to be entrepreneurs, fighting for our freedom to raise our families and and call America home. So um, anyway, uh, thank you guys for sharing this video and logging on. Wow, we're getting flooded with, with lots of comments. Uh, love you comments, by the way, Jot down your questions. Uh, we want to help you er, during this time of this live stream and how to help you make six-figure income, how to work for yourself, how to transition from a job, how to transition from self-employment into owning and running a business. So, uh, babe, um, listen, let's, let's talk about the process, the process of building, the process of building a business. So, uh, mm -hmm. It's 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 sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> no arguments. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing. No tension ever. Never. <laughs> Never. So so babe, babe, what's it what's it like? Tell everybody. I mean, let's not censor this. Be raw and authentic. What's it like to be married to a guy like me that has absolutely no structure and 
and goes out there and jumps all over the room and you got to tell him to settle down. What's that like? I don't, well, what's going on, Doc? Well, first, um, this is, I don't know how many live uh, videos I've done with you. I'm always kind of like. Wait a minute. I think this is, this is the first live video we've done together. Yes, 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 yes. I, I operate uh, behind a lot of the time. So uh, they were like, okay, let's go on Facebook Live. And I was like, well, I don't know. Should we? I mean, is it really something people want to hear about, you know, how we went from zero to a million? Or is it going to be perceived uh, in a different kind of way? And this is all in my mind, of course. Um, like, like for example, guys, if you guys let, let me let me let me do the Rodolfo Vargas on us. Do that, please. Let me translation. Translate. translate, please. Translation. <laughs> so my wife was weird about making this video because she didn't want to approach this video um, bragging. Yeah, I didn't want to. Just she come she wanted, us bragging. She didn't want to come us as bragging that yeah we're making seven figures and blah 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 blah. And I framed it in a way says, babe, there's a lot of people out there financially struggling struggling today, and they would love to work for themselves and have financial control and safety and security, which what I believe is a lot of, a lot of people's concern out there today. Right. And I think I remember always thinking a million dollars was so far reaching and you don't really have anybody that that's there showing you or teaching you or, or answering questions about the reality of making money like this. And, and no one has this perception or understanding of what you need to do to do it. So in that mindset, I don't mind doing Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when we first started, let's let's talk about the process. How did we first start, babe? Did we start off on top and everything was going right and we had everything figured out and all we needed to do was just walk into our office that somebody gave us? Tell everybody the raw truth of how we first started, sweetheart. I, 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 it's so funny because we both, as single parents, I've always – understood that you work for everything you have to earn everything sometimes you know the current generation there's a lot of people not everybody that has a sense of entitlement so when it comes to earning your own income especially this amount um it's amazing to me how people don't realize how much work it takes to do it now and it's not talent it's work and work will always trump talent any day that's one thing i figured out about this process but Boom, nugget right there. That's a hashtag. Yeah. yeah. So I when I met, you know, my husband, I realized that we had very strong personalities. And, you know, I was just known that, you know, couples and, and husband and wife are supposed to, you know, work in separate uh, work environments in separate categories. And we decided to build it together because we we complement each other so well. Um, but to do that after being kind of programmed to think that you're supposed to work separately and then now working together every day and living together every day. Uh, that that was a transition we had to get used to because there was a power struggle yep. about who, who was controlling who and always to make sure to make Power struggle between me and yes. you? No. Like everyone thinks I'm so quiet, right, honey? I'm not <laughs> quiet at all, no. So I have my own opinions and I'm very um, deliberate with my intentions and I know exactly what I want. And, and you are you have that side to you as well, a stubborn cuteness. Um, <sighs> So we had to learn each other's roles and not to step on each other's toes as we build this business. We had to work as a team. Gotcha. Hey guys, if you're logging in right now, you're watching the Money Smart Guy Facebook Live with my wife, Sheena Sapala. And we've done something we've never done before, which is make a seven figure income. You know, right? we made, we earned a seven figure income after three years of working with PHP agency. Right. After three years. This, by the way, this is not total income. This yep. is yearly income. And so uh, we started from scratch. We started from the bottom. And uh, you're watching this right now because people flooded us with questions about how to earn a seven figure income. If, if you're watching this right now, you want to work for yourself. You want to grind for yourself. You want to make a six figure income. You want to be financially free. You're watching life. You're watching the right live stream video. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're watching the right video. So. All right, babe. So we had to find our find our roles. Yes. Was it overnight? No, no. It was a long process, actually. Yeah. So I think that's why I I appreciate marriage because it, the underlining uh, concept of marriage is commitment, and and being committed means you can't run away and you have to face the challenges head on, and you have to do a lot of compromising. And so when I understood that in marriage, I understood commitment when it comes to building a business as well. So. Babe, when we first started, did you ever think we could make seven figures? I, 
I, it was not even in my mind. Um, I just wanted to make a, a decent living to support our family and not feel uh, struggling month to month and paycheck to paycheck, which I uh, assume a lot of people are facing right now because even me with two degrees, but when you blend a family together and you have four of them total, four kids, um, you just want a comfortable life with great memories. And I just, <laughs> we just weren't getting it with the traditional way of, of working for somebody. So I didn't think it, I just wanted to make a few extra thousand a month. And um, when you get the bug of entrepreneurship and you're with the right company, the right uh, industry, then you start seeing things differently. So my vision, I think a lot of people sometimes are so afraid of thinking big. Like most people think that they're afraid of taking action. Like I'm going to go full blown into entrepreneurship and, and they're afraid of it. And I think it's more so people are afraid of thinking bigger. And when you start learning how to make your own money, it's like you're in the dark for so long and you finally start to see some light. And so you have more a clear vision of how big uh, and how great your life can be. You know, uh, we had this conversation when we were first dating. And then when, when Sheena and I were first started dating, um, we dated with intention, which means that we, we were just dating to casually date. All right. Let's let's say we were in dating just to get just to get some. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> Woo! I said it. So All right. So we were dating with intention. And I said, you know what? I, I really I, I knew I was. For my wife, when I knew I was on the phone with her until about two, three o'clock in the morning, pillow talk. Oh, baby, you're so cute. You're so hot. You're so awesome. Blah, 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 blah. And she's like, oh, baby, you're so cute. You're so awesome too as well. Right. So we got past that phase because we realized, man, this is a woman that I can actually build a life with. And and I don't want to screw this. And I don't want to screw this up. And I think you obviously were saying that too as well. Of course. <laughs> I think I knew from the minute that I uh, uh, met him before I even met you. Um, in Strozier Cook County Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. I remember that day. It was on my sister's birthday, May 11th. And I remember you walking into the, the room and I immediately knew because it was a feeling I've never felt before. And then you, you were so cute without you. I, I use my it. prospecting skills. Yeah, he was smooth. He was yeah, smooth. so if you guys are being trained as entrepreneurs with phone skills and prospecting skills and you do well, that immediately translates over to your single life. I like that. Huh? I like the question. Uh, that's, okay, so there's there's some questions over here. So, so uh, let's let's start with this question here from Bree Cruz. So, you guys always say you are both are just getting started. Even right now, we we, we think we just figured things out. Like we we figure out now that we know what we're doing. We have something special. We got something significant that we actually have proof. Yes, that it is special. That it is significant. And so, so how do you keep the fire going in business? And keep the excitement. Ooh, that's a good question. That is a good question. How do we keep the fire going? Especially in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, well, especially in the beginning where you got you're getting a lot of rejection. Uh, you're getting a lot of rejection, a lot of no's, you know, a lot of your friends and family say this and that. A lot of your coworkers, my marine buddies, your your college um, friends that you played softball with, right? And, yes. and by the way, I mean as much as your friends with your college friends, yeah, a lot of them are in business with you or, or any. No, but they're still they're still they're good friends. friends I talk to, just friends. not who I'm with every single day. Um, but no, uh, to answer that question, I, I I strictly remember the drive that I had. I, I don't know if it's always something everyone has inside of them, but I am a natural born athlete, and I've always have been, and I've always thought um, that I was meant to be something bigger than where I was at, and I've always had that mindset. So when we started building this business, even with the obstacles that we faced, it was that natural athlete that came out of me, uh, a pure relentlessness. And I, and I think if people were to see the, the timeline of events and, and see us on a day-to-day -day basis, they would think we're crazy with how much commitment we had to, to, to winning big. And that was early, early mornings and late nights of consistency. You know, let's, let's talk about the fire. What can douse fire? What can douse excitement? is listening to the wrong people. So when we first got started, we had a heavy amount of resistance, didn't we? From every angle. He we had a heavy, heavy, heavy amount of resistance, you know? And so you know, there's a lot of people that try to put so much doubt and disbelief, not only just in ourselves, but in our circle. And I think to the, you know, the people that were listening to, instead of the angel, they're rather listening to the devil. They, found themselves out of our lives. Yeah, I think that's the, the hardest part that people have to make a decision is to 
just to who you surround yourself with. And sometimes you have to, it's the craziest thing. Sometimes not, not that we don't love the people that were around us, but we had to separate for the time being to protect our peace of mind and, and, and just fight through. There's enough obstacles we face every day. The last thing I need is the, the guilt trips and the reminders of what I should be doing. And what I should be doing is winning for my family. And it, it, I, I remember Lisa Nichols. I love her so much. She said this one time, she said, there's so much, there's so much in this world that tells us we must be like, we must be like, we must have people like us. And, and you have to remind yourself that the only person that matters that needs to be liked is if you like you. So every other like is like a bonus to us. So every day I would wake up and say, do you like what you've been doing today? Or are you just living for everyone else's is uh, everyone else's likes? And so when I made that decision, I said, well, I'm going to miss this. I'm going to miss that. I'm going to have these conversations with my family and our kids. And, and this is how it's going to go. I'm not asking for your permission. I'm just giving you notification. And once I release that pressure of trying to please everybody else and just focus on pleasing myself, that was the game changer for me. Eric Aguilar, Eric Aguilera, Eric Aguilera says, how do you guys find a balance? Good question. How do you guys find the balance early in the relationship with business and with each other? I ask because I have a pregnant girlfriend and it's hard to find a balance to give her her time and then focus on the business at the same time. How do you find a balance early in the stages of business? I don't think there is such thing as balance. Yeah. It's like a myth. Ba balance is a myth, man. Mm -hmm. Especially if you have a pregnant girlfriend, you got to make the money. And I think you have to have an honest conversation with her about where you guys want to go. And with a baby on the way, the financial commitment you guys have to have in order to raise a child and be able to provide with the things that you want to provide your wife, your, your baby that's on the way. And uh, you line up your priorities in that way. I mean, think about it. people go to college and they commit four years of their life in balance to education without making much money. So I think as entrepreneurs, we can commit just as much over a 60, 90, six months, 12 month period to get out of this business. I mean, our first year in business, we committed everything to the business. Yeah. And what, what did we make our first year in business with PHP? Our first 12 months we made. We got to 100. We got to 100,000. No, we made $200,000 our first year. I think, and also too, like, I think you have to know what you're getting into. Like I, I knew when I married my husband, I knew exactly what I was getting into. And one thing that's always been our strength is that we're always on the same page when it comes to what we want to accomplish. Good point. We were, we were on the same page. We were always, our mentality was always like, no, let's go, let's work, let's do this. So when, when you have one side that's not on the same page, that's, that's just, an, um, it's going to inevitably lead to a bigger issue. It's a big, the biggest distraction you're going to face. I think that's one thing you did well with me is he constantly um, made me the last appointment of, of the day. And we always talked about in the garage, in the garage with a what? With cigar. Now I'm not <laughs> smoking them now, but you got me under those for a little bit. Yeah. That's pretty good. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you learned how to smoke a cigar because a couple months, few months ago, I know Michael Jordan was impressed by it. So I yeah. thank you for that. We, that was a dream. That was really cool. We had, we had a conversation with Michael Jordan and he sat next to her at the grand opening of his restaurant just because she knew how to smoke a cigar. So uh, that's Michael Jordan. His heir is the greatest player of all time. Ooh, what is your greatest fear? Ooh, Anna Gallo. Like what is, What is your greatest fear? Are you, I can answer that right away. Go for it. Being broke. <laughs> That's my greatest fear is being broke, man. How many got? Listen, if your greatest fear is being broke, share this video. <laughs> share this video. I hate. I'm fearful of being broke. Fearful. I think but, we share that fear very well. Right. And and how do you manage the fear? You fight through it. Fight, fight, fight. Make extra phone calls. Um, Here's a liar. Because if you're not competing, you're distracted and you're being swallowed up by your fear. I'm sorry, I didn't want to dominate the question, answering the question. No, that was my my fear is such. It's like the best liar ever. It it convinces you out of of succeeding. So, and, and I remember you gave me that book because I remember I was consumed with worry and fear and uh, about paying our bills and taking care of our family and being able. Um, to say yes, if our kids ever need anything, if our parents ever need anything. And you gave me books that you gave me books that says, don't worry. <laughs> and <laughs> and there you go. I remember, I remember this from that book is, is you always got to immediately when fear starts to attack you, think about the worst case scenario. And as long as you're okay with the worst case scenario, you realize you can get over it, then stop worrying and just move on with it. So I, I kept that 
that philosophy in my mind. So now when fear creeps up, I it's like a trigger or mechanism that's warning me to anticipate for something. And so at least when I anticipate something that's going to happen, I can plan for it. And and when I plan for it, it leaves us in the best case scenario instead of the worst case scenario. So here's a message from Doc, Doc Derek Malulis. Mal 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 and uh, we, we actually talked earlier today because today today's the day I reach out to veterans on Fridays. Got it. And so Doc's got a question. Did you both have financial industry education prior oh to getting a PHP? So I, so, so I did. So I had financial um, industry education. Sheena did not. Yeah. But the financial education that I had, I mean, I went to two and a half years of certified financial planning curriculum, of which I use zero of it today. Uh, but uh, you've got a finance degree. Mm -hmm. How much of your finance de degree do you use in our current insurance agency today? It goes back to talent is such a is it, it talent means nothing next to work ethic because even in our business alone, as long as you have a strong work ethic, you will you will outdo anybody that has the highest degree or pedigree or, or, or resume. And even for me that has, you know, a degree in finance and, you know, a corporate background and, you know, a little pretty resume. Um, I had to humble myself and learn from people who didn't have a, a degree and didn't have a fancy resume and they knew a lot more um, about how to be an entrepreneur. And that's one thing I'm not taught. I'm taught to be educated. I'm not taught to survive. Babe, how many, you, you deal with clients every day because, because between the two of us, I was licensed for 12 years until I adopted an agency building, recruiting, training and development role. You actually see clients on a day-to-day -day basis. Though. Yes. So how many highly educated but broke people do you see on a daily basis? Let's just say there's a lot of people that need help. <laughs> they make a hundred grand a year, two hundred grand a year, master's degree, PhD, and broke. Would you agree? I would agree. Everyone is is in the same boat, and and sometimes it's a lot of smoke and mirrors. And I think people who achieve you know high success in 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 education, it's it's definitely an achievement. But I think there's a missing piece to the puzzle that. People still need to understand how to survive when it comes to making money, managing money, and allowing it to last as long as possible. Yep, yep. So Melissa says, worst case scenario, best advice I heard. Yeah, because what's the worst case scenario? Either you, you pursue your business plan, execute, or go back to a job. Uh, thank you, Sheena. I will never be okay with being broke. Amen to that. Yes. That's, that's my worst case scenario, and that will push me to continue. Congratulations on your milestone. Thank you, Melissa Monique Royale. What, by the way, what office are you out of? What part of the... Uh, country are you out of? Anna Murphy's got a question for us, babe. So uh, Anna Murphy says, what's the biggest mindset shift for you, Matt, to go from a self-employed mindset to a business owner mindset? I don't even know if you were. Yeah. Yeah. You've always had the entrepreneur mind. Yeah. So I, I think for a lot of self-employed people, they think, you know, um, you know, the, 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 the fancy thing with Robert Kiyosaki, he's got his cash flow quadrant, right? He says you can make money as an employee, make money as a self-employed person, or make money as a business owner investor. So if you guys read that book, Cash Flow Quadrant, this is what he talks about. What Anna Murphy is talking about is being here, being self-employed. Okay, Self-employed, according to Robert Kiyosaki, in our understanding, is self-employed means smart. right? There's a lot of smart lawyers, smart doctors, smart dentists, smart engineers, smart architects, and it complete, their, their practice and their income completely depends upon their ability to be smart and see patients, be in court, draft plans, et cetera, et cetera. Being an entrepreneur is not necessarily having to be smart, but surrounding yourself with smart people. In other words, you got to recruit yourself a team. You know, you got to be able to say, you know what, I may not know the answer, but this this button, boom, I know who can fix it. I know this smart person got an answer to that question, boom. And being able to trust the process and being able to trust that relationship that you can go to smart people smarter than yourselves because if you are the smartest person in your office, you are the smartest person in your team, that's a very bad situation to be in because you want people to lift up your, your business, not necessarily you having to be the smartest person in the world because if you're the smartest person in the world and you're the one responsible for 100% of the revenue for your practice and you have a bad day, you have a bad week, you get sick, there, go, there goes the income for that for that portion. Would you agree with that, babe? No. Yep. Really much agree. I've always played sports, so I understand the power of a team. And if if anything, with kids, always make sure they're in sports. That's a great lesson as they enter business. They're going to understand it. Tony Fernandez, how do you how do you guys play off each other's strengths in business? And how was it in the beginning when you first went into business together? 
I think in the beginning, we uh, well, I know what I did. I tried to control what you did and tell you what to do and, and try to make you into the strength that I wanted you to be versus allow you just to be who you are. And that was a strength in itself. So once I learned that through trial and error, um, I and that I was able to focus on my strengths and I, I realized that I could do a lot more than what I um, convinced myself I couldn't do. And it put me in a lot of uncomfortable situations, but I didn't realize how much I would have grown uh, because of it. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So stop trying to make your partner something they're not. Just let them be. I let my husband be a lot um, to do his thing and, and to, to drive what he's very strong at. And I've seen him over time just excel in it. And he kind of lets me do my own thing. And it works out well for us. We trust each other in our own individual roles. And we've learned to let go of control. Wow. I, by the way, my wife is the, she's an S personality. She's very structured, line by line by line. Uh, she's the type of person who loves to show up an whole hour early before we got to be somewhere. Not necessarily me. Uh, and go figure. I was the one in the Marine Corps. Um, maybe that's because I'm just kind of like, I did that for Uncle Sam and now I'm busy for myself. I, you know, but my wife holds me accountable to a lot of things. And, and also, listen, guys, I also want to let you guys know that my wife is very good at making sure I'm surrounded by the right people, right? And so there's certain people that she will discern. Listen, women, by default, God oh, yes. has blessed them with discernment. And I had a very time, I have a hard time trusting that because I like liking everybody. And uh, she learned, she taught me very quickly. And at the same, I had a very hard time adapting. But she said, so, you know, sorry, so this person, not this person, this person, not this person. I, I don't like that person because I liked everybody. And so my wife teaches me very quickly and who to, who to depend on and who to trust. And I've learned to trust that. So, right, babe? Oh, yeah. And I have no shame in that. And everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Very good. So, uh, so uh, let's see here. And let's see here. Uh, Christian Duque, how many seven-figure earners are in your company now? We're the first ones. Uh, Christian Duque. Christian, I know you, man. You're from Primerica. So listen, a lot of you guys, by the way, we have nothing against Primerica. We love Primerica. Uh, they're what, an eight, nine billion dollar company. You guys are publicly traded. You guys are doing a lot of great things for people because I'd rather people have access and get insurance through Primerica because I know the financial service companies out there traditionally aren't reaching out to markets that Primerica is not reaching out to. We reach out to the same market that Primerica reaches out to. Mm -hmm. Um, and so listen, uh, keep doing what you're doing, but we're the first ones to do seven figures in our company and we did it in three years. So, um, I know, uh, in Primerica, there was a video that went out bashing our CEO, Patrick Bet David. And, um, he said we needed to give homage to Primerica, which means we need to give homage to Art Williams. Uh, but we, we, we do, we respect them and we thank him because in any industry, in any silo, there's always somebody that's going to do it better in, 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 a, in a modern era. This time, we, it just happens to be us. And so... Just like um, Netflix gives homage to Blockbuster. Just like Netflix is thankful to Blockbuster, right? And so just like um, Walmart gives homage to Kmart. Mm -hmm. Sam Walton, thanks, right? J just like... Um, I, I can go on and on. Just like Apple gives homage to Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So I, I did a video on, on dare, dare to be different right in front of your home office in Primerica because we have an office in um, Alpharetta, Georgia. And we did a, a live video in front of Primerica and we did a, a live video in front of World Financial Group headquarters giving, giving homage and credit to the leaders of those businesses to build it where it's at today. So yeah, so we're the first one three years and I know in other companies, they've taken 15, 17, 20 years to do it. We did it in three. Uh, Erica Aguilera, thank you, team. Gilroy, uh, absolutely. Thank you for your example, guys. Jason Lyons, awesome, guys. By the way, if you guys got questions, man, you guys, we got 120 text messages of, uh, uh, from you guys. So um, probably, uh, wow, she's got uh, a lot of notes there. Woo! So you guys make sure you check out those comments, too, as well. So um, cool. So, so another question is, um, so how does it feel to be making seven figures, baby? How does it feel to bring in over 80,000, 90,000, 100,000 dollars of income per month? Uh, I, I think it's like building an, a, a muscle. You kind of get used to it. But 
I think the biggest question that I've heard is, you know, what's next? So what's next is to do it again and again and again and again and to to teach other people how to do it as well. Duplication is the biggest uh, form of flattery. So that would be the next um, thing that I would want to tackle because I think I think in the beginning I thought it was such a hard thing to do. And when you realize it's not hard to do, it just requires work. Um, now just keeping to do it consistently and then teaching other people to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Uwe Trent, I know Uwe, he's from uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So he loves a video. For me, what kind of advice can you offer a new trainee pursuing the entrepreneur business and how to get rid of the employee mindset? Be around entrepreneurs Ooh, constantly. Be around entrepreneurs. You be around like-minded thinkers. You want to learn Spanish? Be around Spanish. You want to learn entrepreneurship? Be around entrepreneurs. Uh, in our workshops, I give this analogy. For example, let me tell you a story. I tell a story about us learning another language in high school. What, what language were you taking class, foreign language? Espanol. Right. So my wife is half white, half black, Cuban, and American Indian. I'm 100% thoroughbred Filipino. Oh. And so now if we wanted to learn Spanish, how much Spanish do you speak today from your classes in high school? <laughs> Zero. Zero. How many guys would agree with that? How many guys took French in high school for a year or two years or three years or four years? Spanish, but yet you're not Spanish or Latino. How many of you guys took Russian or Portuguese or Latin, but yet today you don't speak that language? Okay. The reason why you guys don't speak that language is because you're not around people that speak that language also. However, if, if Sheena and I went to, for example, we went to Dominican Republic with for Kehinde and Ellie's wedding. Oh, that's awesome. And everybody, my wife is like, wow, babe, everybody here is black and speaking Spanish. Like it throws her off. Like she looks at Dominican Republicans and majority of them are black mm -hmm. and they, they were speaking Spanish. And pretty soon we, in, in Dominican Republic, we started speaking up some Spanish terminology. So in other words, if we're going to hang around Dominican Republic for 30 days, not five days, and all we did was speak Spanish, guess what? We would come back to Chicago speaking Spanish. Why? Because we're around other people. So we, you're already making the investment to come to a, a entrepreneur speaking environment is to put yourself in an environment of like minded thinkers and speakers. And pretty soon, pretty soon you'll start washing away the employee mindset and language because what's the employee mindset and language? Why am I going to be in business? I'm not making money in the next two weeks. I'm not making money this week. Listen guys, if I told you in business for 11 months, you make zero dollars. But in that 12th month, you made $100,000. Would it be worth it? That's the risk of entrepreneurship, but at the same time, the reward. Does that make sense, babe? Makes very much sense. All right, cool. So um, lots of other questions here, too, as well. So Vanessa, boom, boom, boom. Um, gotcha. Uh, cool. So other questions here. So how, how, can we, how can others do it? How can others do it? What we've done. I mean, what we've done is not rocket science. What we've done is just not reserved for Matt and Sheena. What we've done is not reserved just because we're in PHP agency. Although it's a lot better over here. I love it. A lot it's faster. Just a lot better. quicker. Um, but how can how can other people do it? Mm, um, well, you got to choose the right industry. That's for sure. Um, you got to do something that you really love to do, and then you have to associate with a platform that's going to help you go from A to B. The fastest and you could do your research and you can find out what platform is the best for you. Um, it's the same thing that that me and my husband did. And we just uh, chose to the financial service industry and chose PHP. And that third category is a coach and a mentor. I mean, if, if anything I've learned through sports since the age of six is that you need the right coach and they got to be able to pull out of you what you don't even see yourself and to teach you the right way to do it. So that was the big element, I think, for both of us that that we absolutely need. And Patrick and Jen, but David, um, were absolutely key yeah. as coaches to us. And the time and commitment that he gave us for the last three years of our life, he is by far the, one of the biggest contributors to our success. Now, outside of that, you purely got to be coachable. Okay, you know, the if your coach is coaching you, you got to be coachable. And I didn't, I didn't question things. I didn't hesitate. Um, I trusted and I just did and it turned out for the best and I grew uh, as an individual. I definitely grew.
I, yeah. I don't think I, I was never like this in the beginning. Yeah. And, and if you have a coach, sometimes your coach is able to tell your business partner, in this case, my wife, the same thing that you said a month ago. <laughs> but I'll actually listen. But she'll actually learn to your coach, not listen to you. So. It's like Pete. It's like such an awesome thing. <laughs> Woo! You got to have a coach. Vice versa. He just doesn't know it. <laughs> Dang! I just got busted out. Okay. Cool. So uh, Melissa says, your office is the best at getting agents licensed and paid very quickly. Kudos. What is your best tip to duplicate in our office in Bakersfield? By the way, kudos to Bakersfield. Oh, yeah. Top office of PHP agency. Um, guys, guys making $100,000 over there in Bakersfield. Great job over there. Uh, hats off to our friends. Hector and Erica. Hector, Erica. Alejandro. Alejandro. Ricky and Erica. Ricky and, Erica and Marco Trujillo and all you studs over there in Bakersfield. So what's the best way for us to get people licensed quicker and make um, money faster? Well, of course, a system, which is why I like operations. I like Excel sheets. Blueprint. Yes, I uh, like. Play, play, I got the playbook. I got the OG playbook. Follow this. <laughs> um, Follow system. Yeah, system is very, very important. Um, having a business mindset about that, you have to have a business mindset about it. But I think what's driven us uh, primarily is that we always focus on others uh, first, and then it just benefits us in the long run. Mm -hmm. So I would just really be obsessed about getting people licensed in this industry because I know what a license would do for them in this industry and helping them uh, build it the right way. I've always, we were always obsessed about the, the other person first and foremost. I think you, you also, babe, you are also very good at helping the brand new person hands on, whether you're doing a meeting for them in the boardroom, mm -hmm. whether you're doing a meeting for them at the client's house, mm -hmm. So, that, so that's what my wife does. By the way, seven-figure earners, yet we're still going to people's homes. Why? Because we are we are wanting to talk to the family about what their family member is doing, right? And, and to answer the questions that and the objections that they have. So therefore, the family member sees credibility with Sheena and, and her license, which the new person is going to be obtaining. And the power of the financial products. You know what I, I, think it, I think it is. I think people don't understand that the biggest investment you can make is in people. And that's not always an immediate uh, gratification or immediate turnaround. It isn't. Sometimes it doesn't. It's not in a day or a week or a month. It could take months. It could take years. And when people understand that you got to invest in people and you, the people that you invest in in the long run is a team that you're going to build a big business with. When they finally get that instead of looking for the quick buck. Um, they're going to be able to build a big business. I think that's, I've seen that, that so many times, um, people invest in the wrong things. They miss out on the most obvious, which is investing in people. Yeah, exactly. And then by that, that means, uh, the giveaways, the prizes, the events we throw, the offices that we keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The events we throw, speaking of events, okay. man, we just locked down this event guys. Listen, if you guys are just tuning in right now, you're watching the money smart guy channel on Facebook. And if you're on with us on YouTube, you're watching the Money Smart Guy channel. But we got a phenomenal event going on in Las Vegas in August. Listen, babe, uh, 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 we sold at our last convention, we had over 4,000 tickets sold in August at our August convention. Mm -hmm. And once we released this announcement that this entertainer, this guest speaker is coming to our stage in, in, in August, Literally in a week, we've sold 4,200, 4,400 tickets in less than a week. We sold more tickets in a week than we did in six months leading to our previous August convention. Why? Because Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart is coming to our August convention, his face with our face, his face with our faces in August at the Venetian in August. And if you guys are looking to start a business, you guys want to make a six-figure income. You want to be an entrepreneur calling your own shots and living the life you've always wanted to live and helping the people that you've always wanted to help. We've got a convention to help you do that. And where is that? It's in August at our convention. And you need to register now because tickets are going to sell out. And if you want to get a ticket, you want to say, Matt, I want to be in business. Matt, I want to get a ticket. Matt, I want to be in this event in Vegas at the Venetian in August to see Kevin Hart. Message us, message us, and we'll find a way to get you connected. We'll find a way to get you started as an entrepreneur with PHP agency. Hit the like button, comment, message us, 
and we'll find a way to get you started. Right? Anthony Griffin says, it's about to go down. I love it. Cool. I love his wife. I love your wife, Anthony. Yep, yep. And that's a uh, Anthony's a veteran entrepreneur. I think he's a second lieutenant now. He was a, he was enlisted. Now he's an officer in the army. Great job, man. Great job. So, uh, uh, Bree Cruz got a question for us. Uh, uh, PBD said we're the most coachable couple he has ever met. Right, host of Value Team and CEO, uh, founder of PHB Agency, and mentor. Is there anything you two would change in the beginning when you st- when you two started in PHB? Oh yeah. What would you change, baby? What would you change? Um, You're so perfect. Yeah, 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 it was, yeah. So perfect, my you know. Um, what what would I change? I think I would start listening to you fast. Listen, start listening to my wife faster. You guys, is this is this recorded? It's it's not only recorded, swear, but it's live. So I can read this back. Can you can replay this, live. share this. You can yeah, actually download the video that. and edit and this into fifteen heard second that. clips. Wait, you gotta say that again. I don't think I. Heard <laughs> I would have started listening to my wife a lot sooner and quicker and faster. I, learned, I started learning to trust her, her discernment. Ah, sucky, sucky, sucky. I hope I got some points. Did I get some points? You got points. Cool. I'm gonna cash in those points later on. Good. It's so inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> it's live. Like it's live video. Yes, our children will see this ten years from now. And say, oh my gosh, mom and dad were crazy. No, like they can see it now because they're sixteen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> jo- well, Jojo, you know, he's seven, so no, because yeah. you can't see this. Um, yeah. um, so I would change um, the belief in what I'm capable of doing. I think I, I think I didn't get it right away. Which I, you were capable of. Yeah, I think I was. You know, I'll just manage paperwork, and uh, lo and behold, I didn't realize I was I was capable of doing what the, I've done. I really didn't. Um, By the way, Sheena, right now she's a beast on the phone. Right earlier on, I think Uwe was asking us how do you, you know, get, gain confidence. Sheena was willing to increase her skill set oh, working the phones. Yeah. So before she just see clients, but now she's very good at working the phones. Helping our associates set up appointments for themselves. Yeah, I, I think in the beginning, I I was a woman in business, and I was in business with my husband. So I thought, you know, here he is in the front. I'll just, you know, stay right back behind him, like back here, um, and and not really have complete control uh, of the business. And I think at a turning point in our careers, I said. You just get to a point you're just like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna step up now. Like I I know what's going on. I can see it. I'm not gonna ignore it anymore. And and I know I can help. And I know it's going to be really inconvenient for me. And I know I'm gonna I'm very scared. And I don't know if I'm gonna be good. And I'm afraid I'm gonna make mistakes. But I know I can do it. I know what I'm capable of because at the end of the day, I'm a woman. I'm not just a mother. I'm not just a wife. Um, I am everything that I was meant to be. You're definitely a woman. But for, for the ladies out there, um, and I think a lot of times I, I think coming to PHP was the first time I saw uh, strong women in leadership roles. Um, and that to me kind of triggered something that in my mind, I've always wanted to be that kind of a, a businesswoman, but I was afraid to because of the stigma around it that, you know, you're a wife, so you can't be that strong because you're overpower your husband. Um, and, and seeing that example finally click to me. And I just started to step up and, and embrace this role and, and, and flourish in it. And so here I am as a, a woman that runs a business alongside of her husband, not next to her husband. And if anybody yeah, she's, knows We're us, side by side. Yeah. Side by side. Yep. We, we, have, we have equal roles, but different roles. Right. She's not behind me. She's not in front of me. She's not below me. She's not above me. We're side by side. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, my husband is amazing with, social media and really touching and relating to people and giving advice. And, and for me, I've always had a, a keen eye for operations and business and, and running things like a business. And that's what I do a lot. And I don't have a role of just processing paperwork. I actually work with the three greatest assistants I've ever could find with Robin, Probably Karen, Robin. and she yes, has the best. And, and it, I develop a team and I've taught my team and we talk and we have business meetings and we go over metrics and numbers and, and I do a lot of training and coordinating. And, um, I absolutely love being a woman in business and I'm not, I'm not a threat to my no. husband. No, I think you actually like it more. So, so sexy. Yeah. He thinks he likes it more. And, and, and for our kids, it's a great example. Um, I think, 
I'm setting for them. At least I hope I am. Um, you are. But I look forward to what what we can accomplish as a couple and what we can redefine uh, as a woman in business and as a wife in business. I'm excited about that. Yeah, because we've only been married going on three years now in March. Very funny. <laughs> He's just doing that. It's not in March. <laughs> oh, so we're going on three years of marriage. So we haven't been married all that long. Mm -mm. But the interesting thing here is that most couples, when they leave their house at 8 o'clock in the morning, whenever they leave the home, they do this for a majority of the day. He has his life. She has this, this life. And the reason why we decided to get married because we want to build a life together, together, not apart. So what happens is what we realize is that married couples, sadly, she has her career, she has his career. By the way, this is purely our opinion. I'm not saying this is the one, this is the one way to do it. Right. But this is just the way we're doing our opinion and what's worked for us is that most couples do this over a period of time. And next thing you know, five years goes by, 10 years goes by, 20 years goes by. And they realize they built a life apart from one another. Whereas here, we do this every, you know, we, we started here, but we're doing this every day. We're doing this every year. We're doing this over the next two years. Or this next, you know, we're starting to do this. And what most couples may experience together in a year, we've, ac we've accomplished in three months. Yeah, we, I think, I think for the most part, we're faced to grow as a couple. And we've done that. You know, and it wasn't pretty and it wasn't easy. And we did that in three years. And I have a partner in, in life and in business. So he's my best friend. He's my babe. This is my girl. <laughs> that's my girl. That's for sure. Um, Cheyenne had a pretty, pretty. Uh, I saw that. Yeah, it's so, so funny. I was, I was reading that. Woo! same one. Okay. Let, let's, let's dig in this one. Okay. So Cheyenne from uh, Tucson, Arizona. Husband, wife, team with kids. What is your advice to other couples with kiddos for growing a business like yours? We've, husband and myself, been with PHP less than a year in uh, 11 months, one year old and are due, one year old are, and are due in May with kid number three. Wow, early congratulations. We're trying to find balance with it all. Our roles, LOL. It's been beautiful and frustrating. Mm -hmm. So your wisdom to husband and wife team would be much appreciated. Well, very easy question with this one. You need to have a what? Nanny. I, I, I don't know. It, it's... Um a very interesting dynamic when it comes uh, to kids because there's a, it, it's, it, I get it. It's very, very tough, but I realize that if in business I need assistance to help me, if, if doctors need assistance and lawyers need assistance in their business and I'm here, I am trying to grow my business with my husband. Well, let's just be real. I need help at home. And I, I know my husband does not want to clean and do laundry and cook. And you don't, he didn't marry me because I can cook. I, I can order. I, I don't want to mow the lawn. I don't no, want to do any not, handyman stuff because us. that doesn't give him investment into us. It's, it's not an investment. I mean, although I could mow the lawn, although I could be the handyman, my time is best served working the business and creating jobs and creating opportunity. That's just the way I look at it. I mean, I was in the Marine Corps. I'm not, I'm not opposed to getting dirty. But once I started learning the value of my time, and also to you, babe, once you started learning the value of your time, it's very quick that we needed help in the house. Yeah, I, I didn't want to come home and be stressed about the house. But we're, but we're making seven figures before you hired a nanny. No, no. We were, I don't think we were making 200000 I I had to figure out a way to free up time to invest the time that I did have on things that would give me more in return towards our goal. So. I mean, we hired a babysitter every time we needed a workshop. It was part-time babysitter. Part-time babysitter. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, that was so fun. So many part-time babysitters. We have three college students yeah, rotating and, in and, and just out. so you know, there's no such thing as balance. I don't really know, you know, who created that myth. There's no such thing as balance. It's, it's just kind of enjoying the moments as you go. Um, but we hired uh, someone to help us out, Auntie Lorna. I love her. Yeah, so we have a nanny we call her Auntie Lorna. Um, she's not she's not a blood relative, but we call her Auntie Lorna because she she's is part our of our family. family. Yeah, she's our family, and um, they they said they always said it takes a village to raise a kid, and they weren't kidding. And so Auntie Lorna is a big part of our kids' life, and she's um, especially with our youngest, who is seven, um, because she picks him up from school and takes him to uh, private tutoring and um, to all of his extracurricular activities. She does grocery shopping and dry cleaning and cooks dinner and cleans and makes the beds and allows us to come home as parents and not have to stress about things, but just, you know, be parents and, and get, a, get ourselves involved with our kids. And 
I will say this is that in three years, you, if you think making that kind of money did uh, require us to do a lot of sacrificing in terms of time with our kids, I, I would be lying to you. And there's, I, some, there's soccer games we missed. There's some football games we missed. A lot you of know? guilt, a lot of guilt. And, and sometimes your, your kids will guilt you. And you don't even, you don't even notice it. Um, and, and this is personally how I dealt with that kind of guilt because uh, when I started to see uh, that I was going to have to make decisions in the long run with our kids going to certain schools, our kids going to colleges, um, our kids getting access to tutoring or our kids needing things that would make them into very strong individuals in life. In order for us to be able to put them in a path, uh, we needed uh, resources, financial resources, financial Money. resources. So, so what, what would be something that I would guilt myself with is saying that I'm not there for them every single step of the way, but I was more worried about when they did need me the most and I wasn't able to write that check. Um, then I would feel, I would feel even worse. So I dedicated uh, myself to the business and I found time whenever I could to, to have lunch or, or come home or stay late. Um, I just found time when I could, I didn't plan it out. It was never planned. It's not structured. It's not balanced. It's just whenever I could make time. But the priority was I had to sacrifice a lot of time with them in order to build something. So now when our kids need things, um, we they can rely on us all the time. And it costs $5,000, not 50 bucks. Yeah. You know, for, for example, you know, JoJo, the school is trying to put them on AD, ADD drugs. ADHD drugs, yeah. Like it's, it's like a thing. I didn't realize how common it was. And I remember... Getting a phone call and, and going into the, the office, I don't need to say the names of, of certain people, but I remember sitting down with the principal who was not a, a doctor, had no kind of medical background, and she- But you're giving a diagnosis. Yep, she gave me a diagnosis that she thinks he has ADD, and I, and I said, oh, yeah, oh, okay, interesting, and I said- um, Boys got itchy butt. What, yeah. what, what four or five-year-old doesn't have an itchy butt? Yeah, so long story short, um, she, she began to tell me that he needed to be on Ritalin and all these other drugs. And I said, well, that's not going to happen. Good yeah. luck with that. And I, and she said, only because my son's on it. And I said, well, when did he start getting on it? She said, around six. And I said, how old is he now? He's around 16, 17. I said, how has it been working out? And she still says, we have good days and bad days. And, and that's... So it's not cured. And I'm not going against anybody parent that has decided or had to do it. I'm just saying I'm the parent that resisted. And I just wanted a different way to do it. And I said, I didn't want drugs. I, didn't, I wanted a natural approach. And so we found that approach. Um, and when we found that approach, uh, it cost $6,000. And it wasn't covered by insurance. And I, I just, I sat there for that moment and said, thank God that I made those sacrifices because I'm able to, in my mind, uh, make an important decision that will affect my, our son for the rest of his life. And I'm so glad that we put ourselves in a position that put uh, us in control instead of money in the control. Because insurance wouldn't cover it. Insurance doesn't cover it. So uh, I always swiped that card and our, our son received what he needed. And to this day, he's still the same normal functioning child. He uh -huh. is not on medication. He is extremely smart in math, just like his oh, mom. Man. Um, and he's excelling in school. And, and I'm sure. starting to get... A lot of mothers and teachers saying, "Hey, what what did you do? Because, you know, uh, your son is 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 improving. He's 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 acting so much better." And then I started telling the story and the look on you know parents and teachers' faces about, "Oh, there's another option." And I didn't know about that because I thought the only option was, you know, what everybody else was telling us to do, which was you know, you know, getting prescriptions. I'm just not for it. So, um. So, yeah. So I just I just think about those moments for a lot of families that don't have those decisions that that money is a, a key in the decision making skills. And, and the sacrifices we make takes money out of the equation. when We have to make some of the most important decisions when it comes to our kids. So he might guilt me now for me not being around and he might not understand it. But I'm the parent. And one day as he grows older, when he's successful and he's graduated and he has a uh, a career, and he's uh, in route to be the next president of the United States. I'm going to tell him the story about remember those times that mommy and daddy sacrifices because it puts you in this kind of position. So, so that's how I live with it. Cool. Well, right, we'll get to, to one more question here from Veronica. And, and guys, uh, by the way, before we let you guys go, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, and you're watching this, please mash that subscribe button, hit the notification squad to be notified of our next video. 
because we're going to be continuing to pour out content this year and, and, and for the years co coming up. And if you're watching this on Facebook Live, please like our page as we spread a message of financial hope through entrepreneurship and free enterprise. Uh, I happen to be a military veteran, served in the Marine Corps for eight years overseas. Uh, my wife uh, has a, a degree in finance and played softball in college and scholarship. Go and, Pitt. And we're both parents, uh, blended family, four kids, and we just want to lead and inspire other families out there uh, through free enterprise and entrepreneurship, and taking financial control in their hands once and for all through business. So last question here through Veronica Garcia. Sheena, you mentioned Cruz Garcia. Battle, battle. You mentioned that the biggest investment is in people. You are great at mentally benching those who, are who aren't ready to run fast. I do as well, but my approach isn't polished like yours. What would you recommend I do to become more polished and sensitive in my approach? <laughs> She's like my sister. Um, Veronica, you're a gangster. Yeah. Must yeah. be the humble park in you. I love it. Um, I, I go back to even in sports, you notice that uh, your, a team is a very important aspect in winning uh, in a game and winning in life. So even with the with a team, there's always people that are going to be in the game, but there's also people that are going to be on the bench. And when they're on the bench, you come to realize they still play an important role. They still are the energy, and you can feed off of it, and it's it's something that uh, that creates a full effect of the entire team. Because there's going to be one point that someone who's in the game is going to decide that they don't want to be in the game or something's going to hit them. It could be an injury. It could be something that happens in their life, and they're going to be taken out of the game. And that person that's on the bench is going to step up and say, I've been waiting for this moment to be ready to go into the game. So for me, that's the con that's the, the mentality that I always think about when it comes to someone who's not mentally prepared. It's not it's not that they're not they're not mentally prepared. It's just not right now. So what can I do to help develop them to the point where when that time comes that they are ready? Because at the end of the day, you have to remember when you started in this journey you weren't perfect. And, and for me, I understand that I have developed um, as the months and the years go on into this person. And so when I always remember how it was for me, I always am looking at the next person like, okay, we're going to see how far you're going to go, but I'm going to make sure I go at your own speed and push you only when I can. Yeah. There, there's certain ways you talk to a baby entrepreneur, yes, a teenage entrepreneur and an adult entrepreneur. And talking to an entrepreneur as an adult entrepreneur all the time uh, tends to, um, I, I guess, off-put people because they're not ready to receive. A baby's not ready to eat a steak yet. You're right. Okay. So uh, I really like this question. I got to answer this one, baby. As okay. a blended family. I'm going to drink on that one. Yeah. Woo! We, we need to, blended families, drink, drink up. Drink it. Woo! Okay. Mm. All right. So as a blended family, how do you process issues? Woo! How do you process issues that originate from the other parent who's not supportive of your business? Let's be mindful. Okay. Well, because our kids are on this one. Yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. So, um, how do you process issues that originate from the other parent? Wow, this 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 is a whole nother video, right? I like, <laughs> yeah, we'll make it brief and quick. Make it brief. Um, but I think you brought your best metaphor that I always love is don't kick up dirt because you're bound to get dirty. So, so you can't we you can't control. Um, different styles, I guess. Yeah, don't kick up dirt because you always lose ground. Right. Yep. And you get and, and you get dirty. Um. So I we we just keep it as neutral as possible. I, I just it's not going to be an easy. Uh, I wouldn't say it's not going to be an easy easy battle if um, you're blended and uh, the parent from the other household doesn't uh, align with with what you think and what you want to do. Yeah. I think you just got to stick to your guns and and keep it as neutral as possible and just don't talk uh, bad or ill about the other household as much as possible. I think for me, I came from a blended family um, and my, my dad had a daughter before he met my mom and uh, I love my sister to death and her mother, I love to death as well. And my mother always set the most amazing example for me because my mother and my half sister's mother, they get along so well and they love each other and they have so much respect for each other that that is the way that I always have known blended families. And our, my blended family works really well with uh, me and my three sisters and my mother and Mama Benita and my dad. Um, and that's how I've known it. Now, to see it the exact opposite way was something that I had to learn, right? Yeah, well, our current situation. <laughs> 
Yeah. So you know, listen, guys, you know, I, I've always, you, you, you can never go wrong taking the higher road because I think the kids will always remember what you did, not what you said. So that could be the best present that you can give them. And especially, especially now that the kids, we haven't even told the kids yet. No, we're going we're gonna to tell them though. About, about, about this? Yes, we'll tell them. We're yeah. Do it secretly. Okay. So, so we're assuming that our kids aren't watching this right now. But uh, when they come to our convention, because we're going to be crossing the stage many, many times at our convention in Las Vegas at the Venetian in August, but the kids are going to have a blast when they see Kevin Hart on stage in Las Vegas. And guys, we're fired up and pumped up about this. Kevin Hart, we, you know, we're, you know, our CEO is talking to Kevin. He's like, Kevin, how, how many public events have you done? How many, excuse me, how many corporate events have you done? Right? Not public. How many corporate events have you done? And guess what Kevin Hart said? Zero. So, listen, we're, we're very excited to see Kevin Hart. Boom. So, not only one thing to get news that, uh, you know, we crossed a seven-figure income. In, and we're so, officially, we're cash flow millionaires, which is an awesome thing to be able to say. We're not a net worth millionaire. We don't have a lot of properties and all of our money's inside real estate or businesses. We actually have that flowing. And usually, we're about to send out a lot of memes on Instagram. So, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Instagram at Money Smart Guy too as well about how to make million, uh, a million dollars. You can make money five different ways as a millionaire, but we're showing one of them. And uh, as soon as we got that news, boom, about this, we found out news about this. Our CEO founder, Patrick but David, dropped the news on us last night that Kevin Hart, it's about to go down in Las Vegas. And guys, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are an aspiring to be an entrepreneur, you happen to be in the insurance industry and you're not being treated like an entrepreneur, but yet you're being told to grow your business and you realize it's not really your business. You're doing it for somebody else, not yourself. And you want to take a look at PHB agency, please drop us a message. Uh, we'd love to communicate with you guys and usher you if it's not with us for you to actually consider wearing the right Jersey in this industry. And uh, I put out a video out there about 10 reasons why we decided to partner with PHB agency. And now we're co-owners of PHB agency along with about what eight of our friends mm -hmm. that we're mentoring to as well. And another 40 across the country too, as well, coast to coast. Uh, but listen, the life insurance industry is very good to us. It's allowed us to not, not only live a six-figure income, but now live a seven-figure income um, as a couple, as a married couple. And uh, uh, babe, what, what does it feel like to, to have that have that confidence knowing that we can create income, six, six, six figures a month mm -hmm. uh, to do what we need to do? Mm, it, feels, it, it feels free. It feels like you could breathe. And it feels like you have an obligation to pay it forward. And that's what we're doing with this video because it's just not limited to us. It's listen, if it can happen to you know common ordinary kids like us, it can happen to you. We have no pedigree. We don't have any Harvard or Yale or a rich uncle that gave us money. We started from the bottom. We started in debt. We started with a lot of arguments. But guess what? We fought through it all. We decided to build a life together. And uh, this is the results of putting all of our chips in from day one. The sooner you put your chips in on day one and you work at it on a consistent basis, yes, you will have freedom. And so that being said, appreciate you guys for tuning in. You stayed with us for a very long time, but uh, you, thanks for tuning in. If you're watching this on Facebook again, make sure you share this video. You like our page and comment on our page and share this video as well. If you're watching this on YouTube, Make sure you hit the subscribe button and you also hit the notification squad. So I appreciate you guys um, for tuning in. Babe, any last words no. I, on, on seven-figure income of the people asking us questions? If we can do it, you can do it. And as my wife said, you do it, guess what happens? Over a consistent period of time, it's not going to happen overnight, but over a consistent period of time, um, in, in, in the words of my wife, we've got 99 problems, <laughs> but money ain't one. So we want the same for you. Please follow our page. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to attend our event in Las Vegas with our guest speaker and entertainer, Kevin Hart, make sure you send us a message. And we'd love to get in connection with you. And if not us directly, we'll connect you with somebody in one of our offices across the country, coast to coast. That being said, thanks for tuning in. On behalf of my wife, Sheena Sapala, thanks for tuning in. Until we meet again, continue to smart. Continue to love smart and be money smart today. Woo!
Check it out. It's awesome comedy. Awesome comedy.